Hello friends! I'm still traveling around tropical islands in search of new adventures that include fishing, hunting, spearfishing, and bushcraft. And of course I test myself in survival conditions. Need to catch something for the morning. I need to use the chance that the weather gives me to cook my snails but I also see that the wind is picking up and I need to get ready for tomorrow. I'm going for a dive. Well guess who I'm going to try to catch today? Giant crayfish or overgrown shrimp. I decided to take this branch with me, make such a primitive sharpie. I don't know if I would need to hold some crab or something. Obviously, I cannot pierce a fish with it. It's sometimes even more convenient to do it with my hands. But maybe for some kind of urchin or sea cucumber, or just to scare away moray eels. Saw a big moray, by the way. Also, saw a lobster underwater, so I have this stick like my long hand so that the eel doesn't bite me. That's what I'm going to do. Well, it is sharp enough. So the knife I'll leave here. I'll go dive. By the way, I noticed the water level is rising again in the evening, a meter and a half closer to the shore. These stones were on dry land. Now look all in the water. In general, a little report. Look how the mountains can be seen on the horizon. Ooh, yeah! So underwater I saw some strange little snails. Funny creatures, I do not know, but I did not want to take them in my hands because it is likely they sting like sea urchins. It is better not to risk. Then I realized that the stick I had with me made it difficult to move, slowed me down. So it wasn't a real spear. I'll try to make a good one next time and use it to catch fish. Then I saw a little lobster, very tiny, but it's a good signal because I know where they are. I will go further to look for them. I found a piece of fishing line and here's a bobber. Looks like it's 20 grams. I do not know what brand it is. A beautiful souvenir will definitely bring home. Maybe even try to use it here.
Since I plan after returning to civilization, take spinning to my next survival and survive as an angler with fishing skills. Let me know in the comments what you think about it. I want to take spinning and try to help my survival with it. But honestly, it does not mean that I will catch something. It may even be easier for me to use this method that I have used and showed you before. Also anyway, I want to learn underwater hunting. I want to get myself a wooden spear gun, diving, swimming and hunting for big trophies of exotic fish. I think it will also be very interesting and you choose during the survival if I am going to do the next survival with a knife or with a spinning or with an underwater gun. And it's going to be like a lottery of what I am going to use for my survival. So I think it will be interesting. Because I know that many of you like fishing, many of you like spear fishing, and many of you like simple survival experiences with just one knife. So I'm interested in all of this too, so it will be fun. Let's go. What I like about this island is that the landscape here is very diverse. You see the jungle, then here are a lot of caves. So when it rains, it is very easy to find a shelter and wait till it's over. Cool look, this is a cool cave. I like it very much, cool, cool, cool. Friends, I've noticed that there are a lot of hanging lianas which I can use in the future to make a hammock or weave bamboo parts together in case I need it. So I'll collect the lianas, roll them in a spool and keep them for the future. There are even very thin vines as thin as a thread. Look and these are thicker. They might come in handy, look. Now the task is to get down safely. Picked up some lianas. I think they will be useful to me.
Guess who I'm going to try to catch today? Giant crayfish or overgrown shrimp? Here's another sign that there are lobsters, and it is a blue lobster. In the restaurants, it is considered to be the most luxurious and the most expensive. I really hope that I can catch one too. Cool. And you can see that in tropical countries where it is very hot, a lot of plants protect themselves with needles because of the hot climate. And I honestly don't remember much from botany lessons, but just keep in mind that if you need to run through the jungles like I did, these needles and spines can cut you quite bad. They are very sharp. Here you can see right away. Look leaves, and here everything is cleaned. Why? Because here I am 95% sure live mangrove crabs. 100% here, you can see how they've cleaned a path with their little legs. And there is a burrow. They make them under trees and bushes and live there. I'll be catching them later. <sighs> An ordinary earthworm, no different from ours from Ukraine, maybe a little bit different rough tail. <laughs> I thought I had already found something to eat, so there's a bunch of leaves and you can see that no snail are here, but where are they? Like I said, most likely, they should be here. Oh man, it's empty too. Look once, right there. You can see right away that there are leaves here, and then it's so clean, and there's a hole like that. There's a bigger one right there. I won't sleep tonight, but I will look for mangrove crabs. Yes, now you cannot see them. They seem to hide from the heat deep in their burrows during the day. I hope I managed to catch something to eat tonight because I'm getting tired of shooting beautiful exotic animals but staying without food. So tonight I will go Vabanke. I am lucky because when I go into the jungle, it is not very difficult to find some fruit or mango or coconuts and bananas and some other unknown fruits. But I cannot stay here long because of the mosquitoes. They started attacking me right away, so it is better to stay near the ocean, where there is wind and there are no mosquitoes. So I gather some fruits and go back to the cave. And here's another good piece of protein. These coconut bowls can be used to make a container to collect fresh water when it rains. And here are the very young banana fruits. You can even see the flower next to the young banana fruits. know what I like about rainy weather? It is not very comfy. Of course I have to hide from the rain because when it is wet it gets pretty cool. But there are good sides. Rain is the source of fresh water in the first place. 
So now I placed my coconut cup here to get fresh water from the rain. And another plus is that when it rains, the ocean is very calm, there are no big waves. And the water is clean, calm and clear. It's not muddy, it's just an ideal time to hunt and look for something interesting. Guys, this perfect moment when the food in island survival is better than the food in the restaurant. Here's a little lobster, or is it a baby lobster? I do not know, but I'm happy because it is very cool, and I think I deserve it. Finally, I have something decent to eat. Saw a couple more little ones, but quite small. But I'll go back now and look carefully, because I know in the morning the shore is full of shells from these lobsters or whatever it is, so I think it's worth poking around here, looking a bit more, under every stone. Look how pretty he is, holding tight. His whiskers, by the way, are very sharp. When I grabbed them a couple of times, I cut my hand. They defend themselves with them. As soon as I came up to him, he immediately started kicking me. And also, when I take him in my hands, he tries to hit my hand with his tail. <laughs> I'm happy the first prey is there. I leave it here and go back because I've seen more. I need to catch at least a couple of them and scout new places for the future. This one here I put near the cave. I think he's not going anywhere. Look how handsome he is.
I'm going back to the cave. Just look how much the water level has risen. Here's my cave. It was all dry here. It was literally two meters to the place where I'm hiding from the rain. Look. That's why I want to do underwater hunting here. There is such a variety under the water that I just have to shoot it all and show you. I need to be sure to get an underwater gun and I will study the bottom of the ocean, the underwater world in more detail. It is very interesting, very interesting. This is the total catch of four baby lobsters. One of them is female. I'll let her go. I'll keep three. I have more than enough. I will cook them in a special way so that it would be as usual. More beautiful, more juicy, and I'll do my best to convey through the video the taste of this delicacy. Woohoo! Okay, one just decided to leave. This is another species. Why is it such a bluish color? This one too. And that I noticed they are more aggressive. The first one was the biggest. I will wait until the rain stops, make a fire and cook them. Now I'll probably dig a hole, fill it with some water and throw them in there. Guys, look how much the ocean level has risen. That is my cave. You remember I shot a video from here? It is almost completely filled with water. I can see the water level is rising. When I went out to hunt, the water was two meters further. Here is another useful thing. This is kind of wire, a bit rusty, but it is thick enough. It is a good thing because I want to try to make a hook, like a fishing hook, to try to get a mangrove crab out of his burrow tonight. The sun is already setting, so I'll take that wire I just found and get ready. I saw the burrows are there, and I don't want to go in there with my bare hands because it's dangerous. Kind of like this. That's the kind of hook I got. I can sharpen it a bit. While the sun is still out, I will make a fire so that there are coals waiting for me here. And if I succeed in catching something in the jungle in the evening, I will be able to fan those coals and cook and finally eat something. And for now I just prepare everything to make a fire.
here is a pile of garbage, but I was attracted to by this piece of bark. It used to be a tree with bark, but now it is just pieces of bark. It's great kindling to make my fire. As soon as I bring a spark to this dry bark, it catches fire immediately. Awesome! There you go. Perfect. At least my mood is better now. Fire is the source of life, the source of my food, which is very important. Even with a flint, it is quite difficult to get a fire. Firstly, there is condensate here in the morning and almost all the wood is damp. And secondly, the logs that I found on the shore are salty and it means they burn quite badly. The sun has already set, so let the fire get going and I think for half an hour, 40 minutes, it will be enough and I will slowly make my way to the jungle and try to catch something to eat. So I charged up the light, took my camera and hit the road looking for mango crabs. Here's the first resident, a little one like this. Of course, I'm not going to eat them, so I'm going to look for normal crabs. It is actually very dangerous to climb the rocks at night looking for crabs. Yes, I certainly have not climbed at night in the jungle. I hope there are no fierce monkeys. There are definitely monkeys here. I've seen them in the trees before. I'm really scared. Where am I going? I see the first crab. They're sitting under a rock. He ran away. But they are there. It's already good. Now, I need to be a little more careful and maybe a little quieter. I can't get them with this hook. They are running away. I guess I have to grab them with my hands at my own risk because I've already missed so many crabs. The wire is not hard enough to hook the crab and pull him out. And here, anyway, look. You can see that the ground is dug up. There is a hundred percent of burrow here.
<sighs> what I was telling you, look, is a very large Akatina. But inside is not a snail, but a hermit crab. This is a cool find. I was happy at first about the snail and wanted to pick it up because I plan to make a snail soup or just grill them. But this is a hermit crab that is in the shell from an Akatina snail. That's the trick. Wow, he's got a claw. Look. Whoa. He is biting. Look at the two big ones. It's really big, very big crab. Look at my whole hand. Oh, it's big. You can really eat one like that. The claw is big. Yes, hunting at night is definitely interesting. Too bad it is very inconvenient to shoot, but this is clearly a find, and I've not seen such crabs yet. A very large hermit crab. Cool. There was a huge Akatina, and this crook took its shell. Man, that's really interesting. And the most interesting thing is that the higher I go up the rock, the greater the variety. At the bottom, there were red mangrove crabs, and the higher I go, the more interesting things I find. These hermit crabs in these shells of Akatina snails, for example. But I wouldn't mind finding a couple more Akatina alive. Here are the perfect place. Here is the burrow. The perfect place is for crabs, but they are not here either. Most likely, they are already somewhere on the hunt. One right here in the hole, a big one right there in the hole, and a small one here. A good one here. How can I get him out? <clears throat> but the problem is that it's all rocks. It's not even earth, just stones everywhere. Choo -choo 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 -choo. Man, how to get him? How how can I put my hand in there? There's an ant hill on top of everything else, and my hand just can't fit through. Okay, he just ran away. What can I say? So far, I have only managed to catch such a baby mangrove crab. So at least I can show you what it looks like, but this one must be seven or ten times larger than this baby. Hello friends, my name is Jenya Panasyuk. I'm still on a desert island and today I am continuing my lobster story. I found a lot of useful artifacts which I will use to create a gun for spearfishing and a lot of interesting things so please join me and watch this episode. Thank you. 
I had to move to another location because the lobster cave, as I called it, was almost completely covered at high tide. I couldn't access because of the water level, so to stay there wasn't an option for me. I moved along the shore and found a cozy spot, but in addition to showing my location, I found a lot of useful props, and now I'll share with you what I have found. The first and very important thing I found was a rubber band. As I understand, it is from a hunting gun. It is a little broken, but for me it is not a problem at all. I can tie this corner and fix it at the tip of my sharpie and make something like a Hawaiian sling. The next thing I have is my flint and this fluff, which is the tinder I will use to make fire. Next, in the jungle, I picked a couple of small bananas while I was getting water, and I will try to make a tortilla out of them and bake them on the fire, or just put them in the fire and try to bake them in the coals. I have a supply of fresh water that I collected in the jungle. I have a banana leaf that I will use as my plate. And I have this pineapple. Look, it has turned a little yellow, not green, and hopefully at least a little sweet. This flower from banana palm tree, this is the babies of bananas. Why did I take it, you might ask? I can use it when it rains like that. Look. I made a hole far enough from the ocean. But for now, I took these small bananas. I'll try to bake a loaf or something similar to banana bread. Well, that's how these bowls will collect water and then from them I will pour into the coconut cup. You probably have New Year's Eve preparations in full swing. Probably some of you have already cut the ingredients for Olivier salad, which I miss so much. And I have no snow here and no Christmas atmosphere. I need to think of something to celebrate New Year and create the atmosphere. And by the way, look what I found here. I know what it is. I guess that this is the device local fishermen use to dig up worms in the sand for catching fish. Either the ocean brought it here, or somewhere here, someone was digging worms and lost this thing. So that is how it works. It is such a handy thing here. First, I will be able to dig up my mangrove crabs with this thing. And the second option that I think will be even more useful is to align these things here. Sharpen the ends and make a tip for a spear with two fork-like tips. Let's create special atmosphere on this island. Next, I have lobsters, which today I'm going to cook as a special New Year dish. It takes all sorts to make a world, and maybe it is strange, but I'm celebrating a New Year like this, friends. One last thing I wanted to tell you. Remember that aloe leaf I used? Protect my skin from the sun. The last time, when I was collecting water in the jungle, I got bitten by mosquitoes, and one of the bites turned out like this. My leg has been brutally swollen for two days. My muscles hurt here, and when I stand on my heel, it hurts right here, the whole muscle. So most likely it wasn't a mosquito, or I got some kind of infection and this whole part of my leg got inflamed right here, and I already can feel it in my muscles. I'm afraid that I might have to urgently stop my survival experiment on the island and go to the hospital. For now, I apply lotions with this aloe because it has antiseptic and antibacterial properties. So I apply this aloe juice to the inflamed area. I really hope that it will be enough and the inflammation will go away if it doesn't get better in morning. Because it's the second day already, then maybe tomorrow I will have to go to civilization to the hospital and find out what happened. Because this should have been like that in the first place. There are so many dangerous mosquitoes here. Malaria mosquitoes too. So there is a possibility of that. So I have fruit, I have a small supply of water, I have a knife, I have bowls waiting for the rain to collect more fresh water. I have a tinder. I also have a torn rubber band for a spear gun. 
a little old, but it's no problem. The main thing is that I have it and I can make something with it, like a crossbow or a spear gun. What else I like in this area? In addition to the fact that there is a lot of trash, uh, there is good vegetation, there are coconut palms and there are a lot of large bamboo, just huge bamboo. I can make a chaise longue, I think it will be durable, quite solid and also mobile. It means I will be able to carry it. I can place it literally here on top of the stones to be elevated from the wet surface. Plus I will be protected from all sorts of snakes and insects. I hope no one else like that will bite me and there won't be other dangers. It's very important, very important to watch this video to the end. <laughs> Here in this peel, I'm going to blow up these coconut fibers, so basically my spark will be mobile and I'll be able to carry it from place to place. Damn it is rotten already, it's too late. So as it heats up, have these coconut fiber right here. Ah, damn, it is quite prickly. As the first layer, I'll put some stones and make the fire on top of it because after I roast the lobster, I can remove the coals and this stone should be hot as a frying pan and try to roast the bananas on it later. Of course, my lobsters are already not so lively and beautiful. No. But the smell is okay. The coconut peel has already dried up. This is how my leg looks now, as you see here is a bite. There is a sort of wound here, and you can see the inflammation right here. It is so hard, here it hurts like a bruise. I can feel it in my heel when I step on it. Everything hurts, and as you see, there is a strip here. Probably got bitten in a vein somewhere there, and inflammation has gone this way. So it hurts here too when I stand on my leg. So this is not a serious situation. I have to do something about it. If it does not improve in the morning, I have to go to the hospital and ask about it. I need to clean the lobster and start cooking.
Here's another method of how you can collect fresh water. Nature kind of shows you the coconuts laying around with a hole on top, and these coconut are already full of water. One such coconut holds about a liter of water. So a tip from nature, set coconuts this way and you can collect rainwater. I'm going to have a stern Uncle Snowman like that That's another thing. It feels like a holiday at once. Now you can feel the atmosphere of the new year. Almost a snowman made of coconuts. Now I'm going to cook these beauties. I want to make bamboo tongs to hold and turn these lobsters on the fire so they don't burn. I wouldn't want to ruin such a delicacy. This is the stick I want to use to make lobster tongs. There you go. And now I have tongs to take the lobster from the fire. Here's a tip for you. <laughs> Friends, I'll also show you how to clean the lobsters. There is the first method. Look, you break off this part. I'm not sure they called whiskers. Here he has such rough thongs. He hurt me quite a lot when I caught him. And here under the tail, he has the same hole. Yes, that's what you are thinking about. So you shove this whisker here and just do this movement once and that is it. The whole intestine is here and the meat is here. It's a cool method I picked up from the guys from Australia. Now with the last lobster, I'm going to put the whisker in here. I'm going to do this one-two motion and pull it all out. And on the prickles of the whisker hangs his intestines. This is all the intestines that need to be removed from the meat. But I'm going to cut his head open like this to get everything from the inside. Because there is a lot of meat in this area as well. I got more little cuts now than when I was catching them. Done. Oh. Look, this one has pink meat. Maybe it's fresh or it's a different kind. Look, pink meat. I can't wait to taste it. Wow, that's not like our crayfish. There's a lot of meat. If I could add some rice to it, that would be perfect. I hope that I will get through the jungle closer to some rice plantations and learn how to harvest rice too. Of course it is not Olivier and not a salad with crab sticks, but a good alternative in my opinion. I'm going to clean these last two. The heat is just perfect.
The coals are perfect, the branches and bamboo are burnt out, and the coconut bark is still smoldering. Perfect! Here are just hot rocks in the corners. I can put bananas on them. I'm still on a desert island and today I am continuing my lobster story. Look where I am. It's funny, in some caves there are entire families of bats. Look, you can see the shape of the rock, and over there, bats hanging upside down and looking at me. I don't know if you friends can see it or not, but I found some abandoned hut up there in the mangrove bushes. Overgrown and in ruins, but it might be a good shelter for me. I should definitely check. Maybe someone once lived there, maybe some fisherman or hunter, and I can find some useful stuff there, so I just have to get there and check it out. And here is a huge, huge rope. Here is a net, but no hook. But there is a lead weight, I'll take it. Perhaps useful to make a DIY fishing rod. It's right there. Can you see it? How can I get up there? It looks like I can climb up here. I'll try. Hope the rocks won't start crumbling and falling down. And I hope I won't fall down too. What the hell am I doing here? It is quite dangerous. Yeah, it's some old fisherman's hut. So... I need my both hands, and not like I am doing it now. Holding a camera with one hand and trying to keep myself from falling down with the other. But let's try. 
Man, the cicada scared me with its sound. I got there. Well, not much, to be honest. Some boards, plywood, some broken nets. Yes, I was right, it was a fishing hut. Fishermen used to rest here or store their nets and equipment. It is quite deep in the mangrove trees, so no one can see it. It makes it a safe location to store all the fishing equipment. Or maybe they were waiting out some kind of storm here, or I don't know. There were also some wasps or bees living here. Good thing they're gone now. Well, I've had a good look at everything, but I need to move on. Whoops! Whoops, almost fell. That would be pretty bad. Let me flip the lobsters. Whoop. Ooh, yeah. Well, friends, here I'd like to discuss one topic a little bit. A lot of bad things happened in our lives, but we should remember that bad moments are inevitable, and we should try not to focus on them too much. Try to focus more on positive things. Try to stress less and take care of your physical and mental health. I wish you all a lot of exciting adventures and interesting trips. Stay positive and keep on dreaming, because dreams always come true. If you have a 100 dreams, 50 of them will come true. I think it is much better than having just two dreams with only one of them coming true. So do not hesitate to dream. Do what you like. Strive for your goals, and you are sure to succeed. And I wish you happiness and peace in your homes. Okay, it's already looking pretty good. So where are the bananas? There, look, baked banana. I don't know if it is enough time or should I let it there for a bit longer? Well, since it has not yet burned on the outside means it is definitely not burned inside, so I put it back, let them bake. Smells delicious. I can't wait to finally eat that meat. The smell reminds me of when I smoked crayfish in Ukraine on an uninhabited island. A very similar smell, only here of course there's gonna be much more meat. I need to clean up a bit. In Ukraine, we play hot potato. Here I will play hot banana. Okay. By the way, it is also good to bake crayfish and lobsters, probably too, because they have their shells. They are baked in the shell. Even if you do not cut the tail, as I did, then they will be baked right in the shell, like in a pan, and the meat will not go bad. Hot bananas! I hope they are softer and tastier, not so rubbery, and without that unpleasant, viscous thing inside. I wish you all be happy and may your table be filled with such goodies and different delicacies. So, I'll try the banana first. I'll start with the one that was baked in the coals. Ooh. The skin comes off very well, smells good.
Well, it is much better than raw. Very similar to the potatoes. It has a lot of starch, so it does taste like a potato. So now I'll take this handsome fellow here. Mm. Now that's a beauty. Meat is amazing. Look, what a treat. Mm. I deserve it. And I didn't overcook the meat. It is juicy, just like I like it. Not dry, not rubbery. And the most important thing is that there is a lot of it. It's really good. With banana potatoes on the side, it's really good. That is the reason I've cleaned the shell from the inside. Here, near the head, there's a lot of meat too. Mm. And the cool thing is that it is salty. I like everything salty and spicy, so for me, it is a pleasant bonus that the meat is also salty. That's how I cut the tail off. Oh, oh, Food is important and good, but I also need to take care of my water reserve. This is very important. <laughs> well, it is definitely juicy, which means there are some vitamins. Sweet. It is so sweet. Good that I kept it. Mm. Just very sweet, very sweet and juicy. I really miss it. Mm. Meat. Mm. Mm. You can feel the celebration. You know, with food like this, you can really feel the holiday atmosphere. And as a dessert, I'll eat fresh and juicy pineapple. Mm. Well, honestly, very sweet. Very sweet. I don't know how it is possible. It was green when I picked it off the bush. But after a couple of days, it turned yellow and became this juicy and sweet. Very sweet. Mm. To be honest, I'm probably more excited about the pineapple than the lobster. All those mosquito bites were worth it. That piece of banana, I mean pineapple. Very sweet, very sweet. So you see how I am trying to find my way to explore this island, but at some point this view opens up in front of me. A little bay. Of course, if I get here during the high tide, it could be a serious trap. Look! It is pretty cool. So I explore this island step by step, study all its hidden places and check places where I can stay overnight or just try to catch something. I'm going to climb into the cave here for sure. Oh, what? Wow, there's a ready-made house right there. Shelves. There are places where I can sleep. The water washed it out. Only hard rock is left here. And this is the way out. Look. A full house. 
But yes, there is a risk that on high tide the water will get here. Actually, it is quite dangerous to move around here. And it goes like that all along the island. There's no way to get to the top. I just walk along the cliff, holding to the rocks so that the waves don't slam me on the rocks. What's in here? Wow, cool, cool, cool. Such places are interesting and a bit creepy. I'm certainly just have to study it and get deeper in there. See what it looks like. Wow, there's such an echo here. When the water hits these rocks, the sound is pretty loud and feels quite heavy. Is that Wilson? Who saw the movie with Tom Hanks called Outcast? It is a very cool movie, inspiring for this kind of journey. Friends, let me clarify something. The cave next to where I catch lobsters, I would call Lobster Cave. Cactus Cave would be where I collected cacti, which is where good snorkeling is and good underwater hunting. Not deep clear water and beautiful coral reefs and enough fish. Another location is Mangrove Cave, where the mangrove crabs are. Now you have a better idea of where I am and what I'm going to do there. Since I am near the mangrove cave, I will be catching mangrove crabs at night. Near the cactus cave, I will most likely hunt for fish with a spear or an underwater gun. Well, the lobster cave is obvious. I will try to come here more often because of course I don't eat this kind of delicacy very often. As I understand, on high tide, it is more likely to catch a lobster here, so I'll do some underwater hunting here as well. And there's a nice shore, there's a lot of bamboo. That is pretty important too. I'm going to try to make a kind of futon to make sleeping at night more comfortable and safer. Well, I also really hope that my leg will be okay and tomorrow I won't need to go to civilization to the hospital. I hope everything will be okay. But the bite and the infection only got worse. The leg began to swell and got very red. The infection went higher up the leg. There are new open wounds. So now it is absolutely clear to me that the condition is critical. The last straw was that it was very difficult and painful to move and I could hardly stand on the leg. So I had to leave the location and go to the hospital to see the doctor. Thank you for being with me on this day. I tried very hard to release the episode on the 31st of December. I wish everyone stays healthy and happy. And if you like my video, like and subscribe to my channel. A lot of people are watching my videos. Some of you forget to subscribe.